face it. Because often when you have a seminar, um, partly because of Wi-Fi, but partly because students like to hide, you just get loads <laughs> of black boxes with names on. And I did a session on Monday and you kind of have to get into performing mode when you've just got these sort of blank screens and you're hoping somebody's there listening. So it's quite nice to see some faces. <laughs> so thanks for that. <laughs> So what I wanted to do um, with the, the presentation today, and, and so we've been uh, members with the Chamber for a little while and work closely with the Chamber and looking to develop the links uh, with the School of Management and work more closely. So we've got colleagues in our employability team that I work closely with uh, who are developing student placements, um, guest speaker events and a whole range of things which I'll talk through uh, as we go along for the next sort of 10 minutes or so. Uh, but I look after our MBA programme. So the MBA in Swansea, I joined the school about 15 months ago. I previously worked in the University of South Wales and worked closely with the chamber there for a number of years and looked after postgrad programmes and MBA programmes. So when I joined Swansea, uh, they were already developing uh, a revised MBA. It had, the course hadn't run for a, a few years. And we were interested really in developing and building an MBA program is a little bit more challenging and a bit more uh, interesting in how we look at different types of business and different challenges that businesses are facing. Um, and as you've kind of alluded to already, this last year has been an interesting experience in the sort of challenges and the things that are facing business. So what I wanted to do for this morning was just to talk a little bit about the industry links that we've built into our MBA course uh, and also the tie into other courses as well. So I'm mainly focused on the MBA and the programme director, but I work closely with other colleagues at postgrad level and undergrad level and developing those industry contacts and, and uh, maintaining and adding to the partnerships that we have as a school are hugely important to, to what we do. Um, partly because it's incredibly interesting and it's, it's fascinating working with businesses. We've got a huge amount of resource and skill and expertise that we want to work with industries to help and support. So it's very much about the kind of partnership and the collaboration where we're offering value to the business community around us. So we work with bodies like the Chamber for the region, South Swansea Bay Business Club. And that's kind of a critical part of, of who we are as a school. Otherwise, you know, the kind of good question is why would we bother if we're not engaging with and we're not sort of working with industry bodies across you know different sectors and different sizes of companies so um, I want to just kind of focus on several industry links that we built into our MBA course uh, and also just introduce and uh, just talk a little bit about our part-time delivery which will be starting in September of uh, this year mm -hmm. so there's quite a few things that we've been kind of building and, and developing over the last three year or so um, feel free to dive in and sort of ask questions and and chip in as we go through and then hopefully we'll have a, a chance for a bit of a conversation then uh, towards the end yeah can i can i play the dummy please yeah yeah sure um you're talking about mba mm -hmm. you know what it means but we don't oh, sorry um yeah, that's a good question and yeah um tell us what it is. that's a that's yeah apologies for that um yeah the mba is a master's in business administration so at the postgrad level, so we've got our main programs at undergrad level, obviously, work through students typically are sort of 18 to 21, the majority, you get you know, some mature students coming in and sort of developing their learning. Um, and then at the postgraduate level within the school, we have an MSc in management, which is a mix of international and home students. And then the MBA, the Masters in Business Administration is a little bit more uh, focused and is designed to be more of a strategic uh, view of business and for our full-time program that tends to be more international students um, who are looking at developing their experience so students coming on to the MBA in Swansea um, normally are sort of late 20s into their 30s we had applications some older ones so students have got a number of years of experience as well as um, their first degree actually some of our current cohort have already done a master's in engineering or IT or other areas and now they're looking for the MBA to be that sort of business management qualification which gets them thinking a little bit more 
about how the different parts of business fit together. So my area, my background is strategy. So I'm interested in strategic thinking. So how do businesses think about the purpose of their organization and how do they then make sense and develop and improve that over you know, the, the, the short to medium term in order to maintain that sort of competitive advantage and that relevance uh, as a business. So uh, in, in many ways, the MBA is often seen as a flagship course within business schools. So because it has that more strategic level and is aimed at learners who have got experience and have already got previous qualifications. So it does kind of pick from a, a sort of smaller a grouping of experience and relevance. And when we were developing uh, the MBA, it said one of the things that we were keen to build into the program was kind of clear industry links that are creating opportunities for students to engage with and be involved with organizations and to bring that sort of practical experience into the learning. So one of the beauties and one of the things I really enjoy about teaching uh, the MBA cohorts is that you've got the students own experience that they can bring into the classroom and they can share with each other. There's obviously our experience as lecturers and the links and the industries and the businesses that we work with and have worked for. And then it's always nice then to bring in and to have that experience from a range of businesses that kind of add to that conversation. Um, and as I said, hopefully provide an opportunity for yourself as organizations to, to draw value and to get sort of the relevance from that learning and that sort of teaching that's going on within the course. So help me, does that provide a bit more of a context for everybody? Yeah, thank you. Um, so there are three um, sort of main areas that we sort of are working along and, and developing and part of my role as the program director is just to kind of look at developing these links and then build them into the student experience. Um, so the, the client projects, the mentoring and the guest speakers. Uh, I'll go through each one in a little bit of detail um, because they are slightly different in terms of the amount of engagement and, and potentially the relevance to you as, as business people. So the first one and probably the main one in some ways is the, 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 the availability of a client project. And this is essentially where we are looking for the students to work as a consultant. So working on behalf of an organization to work on a challenge or an issue or a, a problem or a, an opportunity or an evaluation that the business is keen to, to develop and to work on. And I've been uh, chatting with a couple of uh, businesses over the last sort of three or four months, uh, setting up the projects for our current students, which they'll be doing in the summer. So from about middle of June on to towards the end of the year. Um, and what we essentially are looking at here just is really to give the students something more practical and real that they can be developing their skills and they can be bringing their learning to. So it's towards the end of the course. So they're drawing on the modules that they've studied, the different models and, uh, and theories that are important. And also to give them an opportunity as well as we do in the, in the class and in the discussions to think about how those models and theories actually fit in, in a business problem because you know, it's sometimes there's a gap between theory and practice and they should inform each other and they should be much more closer in terms of how they work and how they actually are valuable. So the client project essentially is in place of the more traditional dissertation that master's courses um, used to be more focused on. Um, and certainly a lot of MBA courses now are looking at a client project or a more practical piece of work rather than an academic study. Um, and I, I changed this when I was in USW, we moved away from the dissertation because unless students are going to go on to academic research, when they go into their careers, they're not likely to be asked by their line manager to write a 20,000 word theoretical discussion based on primary research, unless they've got a very interesting line manager. So what they are looking to do is develop and think about how they manage a project, how they work for a client for an organization and how do they then put together a meaningful piece of analysis which is then valuable in helping to solve or address the issue that's been identified um, and that's something which is far more interesting and gives us an opportunity to really work with businesses and be a value to them so the the problem solving part really is the students working as that sort of objective view which is sometimes really uh, helpful for an organization. 
because when you're trying to evaluate or, or work in your own environment, because you know so much and because you're so wrapped up in it, it's very difficult sometimes to step back and look at things in a more objective or a slightly more sort of questioning way. Um, so the students provide that sort of role and myself and colleagues then act as the module team. So the kind of guides who work with them and then work with the client in developing that project. Uh, practically, the students will be producing a 6,000 word report. So you have that sort of uh, final uh, endpoint, which is developing the analysis and providing you with a proper end of project uh, evaluation and assessment. So that report is part of their assessment along with a couple of other things, but also has a more tangible output for you as, uh, as the client, which is a, in, uh, essential when you are looking for ideas and things which are gonna be developing and really important within your business. Um, and as I said, so some really interesting conversations um, with uh, Howell our Health Board and a couple of other companies who are looking at using this as a chance to look at issues that they don't have the resource or the space internally to really focus on. So, uh, and as well as the, the MBA, we also have MSc management students. Some of that cohort are working on a similar type of business project. So there are other opportunities as well Oops. that might lend themselves to, to working with you then on something which you, know, you really would like the space to be able to explore and to develop. Um, the nature of that, of that challenge, I said, uh, I work with our partners developing the project brief. So we've got a template that we put together that I can make available so uh, people can have a look through and see what sort of information we're, we're working with. Um, it tends to be, I think the projects work effectively when they're looking at sort of an evaluation or a scoping study, because what we don't want is to have too much onus on your time and energy. So. We, the students can often work more clearly on a kind of desk-based piece of work for you. So there would be some links and there'd be a contact with your organization that we can then develop and we can make sure that the communication channels are working effectively. But we don't want this to be kind of an onerous element for yourselves and the students are not meant to be or not designed to be working in your organization. They're working on behalf of your organization. Um, so that's a, a kind of a big driver because it's a, an important part of the, the learning element um, for the students. The, um, the second one is a little bit more individual um, and is something which we've built in to a kind of skills module which runs underneath the taught modules in the MBA. And because our students are experienced, I said their average age is sort of late 20s, early 30s, then we're not looking at sort of recent graduates or undergrads who are looking at just developing essential employability skills. What we want to do with the MBA students is develop and build their sort of professional skills and, and really draw on the experience that they've already got. So the mentoring role uh, is quite a, a nice way in which we want to work more individually with our students and the course. Um, and they actually do two elements. So in the first half of the course, the students mentor international students on our undergrad program because they're already experienced, because they've already got work um, and you know, good practical knowledge that they can use. And because they're international students studying, then they can provide a really valuable uh, lesson and sounding board to our current undergraduate students. And then in the second half of the program, so around about for this cohort be from about June, July onwards. We want then those students to have a chance to then have, have an opportunity to be mentored by industry links. So they can then think about people who've a bit further ahead in their careers and obviously learn and get those sort of lessons. Um, so there's a value there from the student's perspective, obviously. I think the value for businesses is the opportunity to engage and have sort of relationships with uh, really strong international students with very, very good academic backgrounds and sometimes some really interesting industry links. So particularly if your business is interested in sort of international connections or is looking to get a sort of maybe a, a sort of wider perspective, then this is quite a really good opportunity to develop that sort of experience, cultural understanding. So our students tend to come from Africa, um, Indian subcontinent, We've got a Jamaican student in the current cohort. So we're looking to sort of get quite a wide range 
of backgrounds and nationalities, which makes them a really interesting group uh, of students to be involved in. Um, and again, that mentoring role is important. That it's not an onerous thing. We're not expecting you know you to be uh, on sort of constant speed dial to the students and sort of solving all their problems. Uh, it is very much providing that sort of uh, industrial experience and that just that personal uh, learning and knowledge, which is you know absolutely critical. Um, and then at, at the moment, we're looking at sort of maybe two uh, meetings with the student then because the students will have a better sense of what that mentoring role is like because they will have been doing it with their students and our colleagues in the employability team uh, provide a mentoring role and, and guidance and sort of support so we can sort of run through and work through with you what those expectations are and how we'd like that relationship to work um, and again it, it's a way of just sort of fostering and promoting uh, links and partnerships with a range of businesses um, and developing that network of contacts which can be you know, incredibly powerful for you know, seeing what might develop from those sort of conversations so those two are a little bit more built into the program uh, in terms of the student experience and student activity um, the third one is a little bit more open in many ways um, and this is quite an interesting one to chat to businesses about because sometimes when you mention this, people go, oh, no, I'm not standing up and talking in front of people, or I'm not going to do a webinar and, and have everybody listening to me. Um, but guest speakers are incredibly powerful parts of our student experience. And we were doing evaluations from uh, last term. And one of the things that we were chatting about in a couple of the modules was how much the students really valued the opportunity to listen to or to, to chat to people in businesses. Um, because you know, you've got a huge amount of fascinating experience and relevant current business activity, um, successes, challenges, you know, frustrations, whether it's your printer or your IT, then all these things, you know, that, that's what the business world is. So guest speakers don't have to be very formal. Um, for some of them, I know some colleagues, um, certainly with our online delivery at the moment, uh, have simply had a kind of Zoom interview with business people and then um, made that available for students and students then can obviously draw from the, that experience and then we can use that as part of a seminar session. So guest speakers can be quite formalized. So for the MBA, we look to have sort of two or three events during the year where we will bring in a guest speaker, which is a bit more of a formal topic. But certainly at module level, it's really nice to have those sort of real experiences. So again, it, it questions and challenges some of the theory that we're introducing to students because there's sometimes a danger that students think that the theory is absolutely correct. So if it's in a textbook, it must be true. And it doesn't always work that way. Okay, it may work in some instances, but the theory doesn't necessarily tie in nicely with every situation and every eventuality. So my area of strategy. I tend to see strategy as an emergent thing, you know, stuff happens. So being able to evolve and shape and have a clear sense of what you're trying to do, but how that might then evolve or be uh, impacted by other things just seems to be a more um, realistic way of understanding, as I said, particularly the last sort of 12 months is, is a pretty classic example. So uh, we're really interested and, and always welcome to people who would like to come and talk about their business and, you know, just kind of share the challenges, share the experiences. Um, and that's something I think you know, the Chamber is great at developing and, and building those sort of networks and those activities around. And it, it can be very, very informal. So, you know, similar to how we're doing today, it doesn't have to be seen as this kind of big sort of, you know, I'm doing a lecture. It's more about come in and, and talk, you know, just tell us about what your business world looks like. And then that's really useful to then use that as a, a bit of a sounding board for the ideas and the content that, that we've been looking at. So those are the sort of three main areas that we're looking to, to build around. Um, and then if you know anybody or you're interested in developing your studies, then um, the full-time program is the one that we started and set up initially. Um, but we've now got um, a two-year part-time course starting in September. Um, and actually, even before the current situation, we were already starting to look at a more blended learning approach where we use online materials as well as then uh, sort of in-class uh, Friday, Saturday 
a more social session, which is hugely powerful. Okay, that, that's the bit that I really enjoy. When I've done weekend delivery in the past, having the chance to really explore and discuss ideas and themes with people, particularly from very different backgrounds and very different types of experience is, is incredibly effective. Um, so that sort of program will sort of develop with the beauty of the part-time delivery with the weekend is that there's a clear structure and those weekend dates are set out early in the program so students can build their, their learning around their, their work pressures and family commitments. So um, that's the kind of next thing that we're looking to set up. So you'll probably see information coming out around that because we'll be um, promoting that and, and just getting out more uh, information about the delivery over the next few months. So uh, if there's any questions or if, you know, in, over the next sort of couple of weeks or so, if anything strikes you, think, oh, it'd be nice to have a bit more information about that, please get back in touch. And I'd be happy to, to have a chat and, and just to run through a little bit more for you. Okay, hopefully that was quite uh, helpful and I see apologies for not setting the context. He's so, so wrapped up in the subject and because you know the letters so well, it's easy to just kind of get uh, lost in the acronyms. Okay, but uh, any questions or any thoughts or comments would be really welcome. Yeah, so we all do it, Paul, don't feel bad about it. You know, everyone assumes because we know, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. uh, there we go. Anyway, thank you for that. You would say. Paul, um, you mentioned the more senior um, students that might be looking to join a course in the future. Um, um, obviously, our main interest is, or has been for a long time, India. And we've been quite closely and are developing contacts with various universities in India. Um, and how is it that you contact and get in touch with would-be students from India? Um, essentially, in the Indian market works very much through agents. So um, in and, and most countries actually, um, Africa, Nigeria as well, uh, a lot of international students tend to work through agent recruitment agents for universities, um, partly because they manage the whole process. So they coordinate the links to the universities. They tend to work with sort of British Council and other businesses then to set up um, uh, conference events, you know, virtual open days, um, visits. So in the past, I've gone over to India several times and I've done talks and, and exhibitions for the British Council. And, and I've certainly in Mumbai, I've spent many a happy hour going from north to south in a taxi, going mm -hmm. from agent to agent to sit in the office then and, and just meet with students and go through and talk. So, um, yeah, we've got, you know, I, I can certainly provide some more uh, information about uh, agents and links because our, our, mar um, our marketing team work really closely with uh, a number of agents in India. Um, and that really is the network. You, I don't think you get any students looking sort of independently they might do their own research and they might do certainly the stronger students will do a little bit more um, research and shopping around for whether they're looking to study in the UK the US Australia Canada tend to be the popular ones because obviously English language mm -hmm. um, but yeah agents are very very strong um, yeah. and they work very closely then at coordinating so we work very closely with a series of agents to get our message out and to obviously promote Swansea and to make sure that when students are going to an agent we're a little bit higher up the list of places that they tend to promote and they tend to be looking to advertise. Yeah I've got to confess we were and are still agents for TSD. Um, first of all it was direct and then it was through the Elizabethan School of Elizabeth Language, College. Elizabeth College of Language, I think, mm -hmm. or learning or something in London. Um, but obviously that was before the COVID hit and uh, I don't know what's happening now. But I was out in India two years ago and uh, I got an invitation to talk about Wales and uh, the job that we do, or that I do um, to the uh, Benares Hindu University. Mm -hmm. And they had never been contacted by any university in Wales or the UK. They just hadn't, this is the second biggest university in India. Mm. So um, I'm, um, if there's anything that, you know, in the course of our work that um, can assist the university, then be prepared to, we would obviously work with it through an agent as well, but it, I'm not sure that the agency system always works as well as it uh, might do. Because, well,